event today? Yes. And who, who, who of you is at your first open source software event? Yes? Well, two, yes? All right. Hey, welcome. That's really, really cool. Um, open source is a very big part of my life, and um, up until a couple of years ago, I probably would have called myself a Drupal guy. Uh, I do not do that anymore, um, and I'll tell you, I don't call myself a Drupal guy. There's, it's a little more nuanced than that. <laughs> um, indeed, uh, if you looked at the program today, um, David was telling me about some uh, issues in your community and uh, looking for new ways forward and new possibilities. And um, maybe the fact that we need one true market to sell Joomla better. Um, that could be true. So how do we get to the one true market? Um, and what is the one true market? And how do you define that? Um, and um, I've come up with some examples of people who have found something like that. Um, how does this fit into, and how does this fit into your project? Uh, the challenge is I'm going to try and fit this all into the next, uh, yeah, 25 minutes, and I've got about a 45-minute presentation, so am I talking too fast for anyone? Am I talking too f No. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, I will be here all day today, and I will be on the boat trip tonight. So if you have questions, um, um, there will be plenty of time to find me and talk to me later, and I'd really, really like feedback on this. Um, uh, if you strongly disagree with me, save it for tonight on the boat. If you think what I said is awesome, you can tell everyone in the room now. That's fine. So everybody calls me Jam. I was the 18th employee at a little company called Acquia. I left Acquia when Acquia was about 800 employees. And in October last year, I incorporated Open Strategy Partners GmbH here in Germany. And uh, this is our core team. Tracy Evans is a hotshot MBA business strategist, experienced, structured, smart person. Uh, I come from, uh, at this point, 15 years of open source and about uh, getting on a decade of marketing. And um, the thing that I've been thinking about very, very uh, intensely for several years is the intersection between open source thinking and practice and business models and delivering business value. And, and this space between uh, changing the world, making money, sharing things together, all this counterintuitive, weird economy that we live in. Uh, and Heather McNamee is... Um, uh, an incredibly experienced uh, technical communicator and educator, and she works with us as well. We do uh, strategy marketing and communication for technology organizations with a very special focus on open source. Uh, I'm going to give you a disclaimer. Some clients of mine appear in this presentation. Um, basically, we created the company with the idea that um, if you communicate with each other in an authentic manner, uh, you can build communities, and this sounds very familiar to open source people, I hope, um, and with transparency, honesty, sharing, and so on, communities come to form, and those communities actually create value, right? So we deliver value. We're realizing our own versions, we're uh, visions, we're supporting other people's businesses. We are, um, you know, supporting our own families, hopefully. Uh, there's a lot of value that comes out of this weird thing which that we do, like if you'd have told somebody 30 years ago, I'm going to work a, a full-time job, and then my whole weekend, I'm going to spend doing more of the same work and giving it to everyone I know for free, because that's awesome, right? That would have been a weird thing to say 30 or 40 years ago. Now it's what we do all the time, right? So um, telling all these kind of stories and uh, helping connect organizations with uh, of the people who need them is pretty much my full-time job now. I don't just do that in Drupal. I am not a Drupal guy anymore. I am uh, this open source marketing person, and I don't know any other organizations who are doing exactly what we're doing. So that's kind of fun and exciting. Um, I was told 
that your project is having trouble choosing the one true market and that that makes it hard to market Joomla itself and it makes it hard to move things forward and some people in the community feel stuck. Um, I was also told that uh, this is a challenge uh, for your community because unlike some other open source communities, Joomla doesn't have a benevolent dictator, right? So um, who's familiar with the, th the, the term bike shedding? We use this a lot in Drupal land. Um, the shortest version of this is if you're building a nuclear reactor in your town, right? Um, selecting the site is going to be done by very specialized geologists and very specialized engineers, and they're going to tell you where you can put that nuclear reactor, and then you're going to find out where the cooling towers are and where the horrible uranium stuff is going to go and how that's going to be built. And they're going to give you a report exactly how many meters of concrete using what kind of steel and titanium pipes are going to happen. And if you're the city council, you're just like, yes, yes, 5 million euros, 20 million euros, a hundred, yes, yes, yes. And they say, here goes the access road, and here's all of this safety stuff, and how you keep airplanes out of the air, uh, yes, yes, yes. And when it gets to the color of the employee bike shed, the council calls a special debate, which lasts over three sessions, and everybody is arguing about which shade of blue, actually, and whose football team color is going to go on it, right? Because it's the only thing that the city council is actually qualified to talk about, right, when you're building a nuclear reactor. Somehow in Drupal land, we've taken this concept, and this means lots and lots and lots of discussion, okay? So I've been told that Joomla also has its fair share of bike shedding. Now, Decentralized and, and, and democratic, um, somebody suggested to me that that could be a weakness in this project. Um, I think that knowing your weaknesses, right, can also be considered a strength, right? If you know what you're bad at, I know I'm terrible at structure, and I know I'm terrible at systems, right? which is why my business partner is an MBA, because she does that stuff, and she knows how to use Excel and everything, right? So I get to do other things that I think I'm good at. That Hopefully that makes me better. So I think, okay, that we can declare you being very diverse, not always agreeing on everything, and having a project that tries to be everything to everybody, let's that declare that a strength. Let's declare that knowledge a strength, right? Now, David came to me because he said, oh, Drupal knows exactly what it's doing, and it's got the one true market, and it's doing so well and fantastic. And I was like, wow. Uh, so that's a really interesting outsider's perspective. It does not look, that it does not look like that on the inside. Uh, um, and, and I would not say that Drupal's success is monolithic. I would not say that there has been a one single direction with a single vertical and a single customer type, right? If you step away from Acquia, for example, if you just move Acquia aside for a second, uh, there are, you know, hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands, I don't know, there are thousands of businesses doing Drupal stuff and, and selling Drupal to education and Drupal to science and Drupal to local schools and building extensions and modules and plugins and, and, and marketing campaigns and everything to do great stuff with open source software. That's our goal, right? We want to do, we want to make a positive difference with open source software. Um, and I don't see that they've found a one true market. Um, and I see that there are also thousands of different ideas. And um, I don't think that the project, as a project, really has done a great job of marketing itself. I think that's starting to change. I'm seeing some, some interesting signs in the Drupal community. Um, and my old job was certainly to try and promote that, but that was very much in the service of this giant behemoth of a startup called Acquia. So um, I don't think that Drupal's actually the perfect example um, to follow. There are certainly good things happening in that community, and there are certainly things that I would, I would avoid. Um, but I'm going to tell you now, my conclusion 
Um, I had some trouble coming up with the keynote concept after David asked me because I was like, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think there is a one true market. I don't think you need a one true market. I don't think you need that. Okay, Joomla is, you know, real, old school, anarchist, you know, open source, right? Power to the people. You guys, you're still the software hippies, and that's awesome. Okay, um, let's make a virtue of this fact. A little bit of chaos, a lot of creativity, a lot of different ideas. So what if the answer is not, we must decide what the project is for and you must only do that with the project, right? That's not, I don't think that works. I think that, let's try and keep this a little bit anarchisty, right? I think that the actual answer is that there is a your true Joomla, and I think that there are there is the chance to organize somewhere uh, 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 at a smaller level and build coalitions and build cooperatives and choose efforts that you care about and find like it people like-minded people in your committee uh, community to do those things with to build those things with and to sell those things with because I want to remind you that as much as we are software hippies and idealists it's hard to be idealistic if we don't have a roof over our head right it makes a lot of sense to have some sort of a business that you can support yourself with so this diversity right this is your superpower decentralized democratic trying to do a lot of things for a lot of people this is your superpower okay I also designed your new logo, you're welcome. <laughs> so, awesome, right? How do we feel about that so far? Huh? He likes it, good start. I've got one person in the room, I'll work on the rest of you now. Now, neat, okay, awesome. We can go and, and, and find our market and we're gonna sell Joomla and it's gonna be so awesome, right? Cause, oh, now. Um, nobody cares about Drupal, and nobody cares about Adobe, and nobody cares about WordPress, and nobody cares about Joomla. In fact, nobody really sh should actually care about websites. Um, so, you know, 10 years ago, having a website, 12, 15 years ago, having a website, that was transformational, right? And businesses who had them and didn't have them, they were very, very different things. Um, nowadays, everybody's got a website, right? And, and they're sort of commodity. And you need to have something especially attractive or functional or powerful for it to be something special at all. And I'm also sorry to tell you that your skill set, your ability to make functional, powerful websites with Joomla or anything else, right? W that was once transformational, it was once a good base for running a business, that's largely a commodity too, right? Um, as my friend Tim Deason in London said, uh, the uh, digital agency world is changing and lots of things um, can now just, there's just a software library or it's just a service or something. So um, basically this sort of stuff has taken the bottom out of the market for all of us, like this, the ability to make something attractive, right? That used to be hard. Then to be ability to sell something online, that used to be hard, and none of that's so hard anymore. And the question is, do we even uh, uh, need a website, right? With Medium or Facebook, these are, these, are, these are serious threats to us if our business is we make websites and we sell Joomla, right? Lucas Fischer, he has an agency in Switzerland and he does a couple of interesting things with it, but um, his point was uh, most, of the he, most of the time, he says, people contact us because they need uh, a new website and we have two options. We can create a website and make money um, or we can ask the client what they actually want to achieve with the new website, right? And then he says, so they, they, they then they actually work with them to find out what they need and what their business is about and that, that sort of thing and he says, we use Drupal as our core framework, but Drupal itself doesn't create value for our clients. It's not the website. It's the fact that Lucas and his colleagues can talk to with you about what your business is and wh where you are now and where you want to go, and then support that with a technology solution, which may or may not be Drupal or any other 
thing, right? It's not the website that matters. Right? But you guys care about Joomla. I hope you care about Joomla. You do. You do. Good. Thank you. But uh, everything would have fallen flat if that weren't, you know, true now. Right? So, hey, we are in open source here. And you, and you, and you, and like everyone else, you have the right and the ability to take your project and make it what you need it to be. You have unique knowledge and experience, and you can realize that. You can turn that knowledge and experience into value for yourself and others with your open source software. So you should take it, and you should make it yours, and you should use it not to sell Dro uh, Joomla and not to sell websites, but to deliver business value. Now, when I use the word business, va uh, business here, um, I'm aware that that's a turnoff for some people, but it's uh, an important concept to, to understand that business value, um, if you're a charity, it's the ability to collect donations effectively and then uh, so that you can make a difference. It's the ability to, to re whatever your vision is, that is business value for, for, for you. So, don't sell websites. You need to move up what I call the value creation uh, uh, chain. And um, placing yourself and your business higher up the value creation chain means offering more than code and more than building some websites. You need to deliver business value, right? Nobody wants a website. They want happier customers. They want better informed surgeons. They want more donations to their charity, right? So you need to figure out what the KPIs are, key performance indicators, KPIs are for your clients, what will actually help their business improve, and then figure out how to implement that. Um, not The conversation should not be which text should be the biggest on the home page and which shade of purple, right? Those are bike shed discussions, and they're kind of pointless. Um, so if you're at that level of discussion, you're at the wrong level of discussion with your clients. So what do you do? You sell Joomla? No. Hey, so who's familiar with the golden circle that is incredibly pixelated here? Gold Simon, yeah, Simon Sinek, awesome author. I can highly recommend him. Um, he's a really inspirational uh, author and speaker. He talks a lot about leadership and a lot about purpose in organizations. And basically, uh, if you start with what do we do, right, um, it's really hard to, to, to know whether what you do is effective and it's really hard to measure it. Um, because you don't know uh, why you're doing it. So if you start with your organization's why, if you establish your purpose, if you n understand what your client needs, the why of your relationship with that client, right, then you can figure out how to achieve their goals. And when you do the what, when you do the things to help the client, then you can measure if they're going towards that why or, or not. Okay, so what do we do? We sell Joomla websites. That's really, really, um, that's really hard. And nowadays, building websites, as we saw, is a commodity. So it's not a great place. You're going to end up um, in price wars over services and all sorts of places that you don't really want to be. So as I was talking about it uh, before, you need to help someone solve their problems, right? You need to help them create a new opportunity because maybe you understand the digital space and they don't. Uh, Megan, who runs the Drupal Association, and this guy, Alex, who lives in Philadelphia, um, they both talk about empathy, which I like. They say you really need to be able to put yourself in your customer's shoes, right? You have to understand their problems. Um, and even if they come to you asking for a website, you need to dig deeper and uh, solve the problems that they have, not just offer them something shiny and responsive, right? So you need to find out what they're about. Uh, and I like this quote. It's funny if you know Alex, because he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a handful. He's like an East Coast Philadelphia kind of, he's hard, right, as a, uh, he, Wonderful person, hard to deal with sometimes. But actually, as a business person, um, I really like the way he talks about empathy and, and, and understanding other people. So this quote also really drove the issue home for me, talking with Megan. As we saw before, 
with that little girl in her bed, um, nobody cares about Joomla, right? You need to uncover. Um, if you start by pitching Joomla in a meeting, you're probably not going to get very far. Um, you need to uncover business goals and uh, you know how you can solve them. And whether that's Joomla or not, maybe you can help them another way. So if you've put yourself in their shoes and you understand why you're in the room with that person and, and uh, you know, Tim has this other really, really fascinating uh, a concept about dealing with clients, and I think this one is really, really important. Um, you can start a lot of relationships where somebody says, do this for me, and you build what you're told, and you put the login box on the left, and you make the header blue, and so on. Um, but this is pretty low on the commoditization curve, or higher, however that goes, right? Um, putting things together that someone else has already designed and decided on, that's pretty low value work. And if they can't do that with Wix or Squarespace, they might be able to offshore that to somewhere that's a lot cheaper than you anyway, right? So um, this is, you're not adding much value when you're doing something you're told. Um, and it's probably not great for customer retention rates, uh, a customer or, or for, you know, what you want to charge for your hour, and the interesting thing that I noticed with this model that Tim has of do for me, help me think, think for me, it pretty much fits with the golden circle as well. So if you're doing what you're told, you're not adding a lot of value. If we move to the next level of Tim's model, you should help me think, get into the UX and the design. I want to help, I want you to help me work out what the features of the site are to get to my business goals. And that's, that's nice because you're, 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 you're starting to have an actual intellectual conversation with, with your potential client and helping uh, figure out how you could address their problems, and that's nice. The best way, the best place to get is becoming a trusted partner and thinking for your client. And ideally, your client is going to come to you and they're going to say, I need all the surgeons in Europe to understand this new technique that uh, has a 30% higher success rate and a 50% higher survival rate than the techniques we were using before, how can we do that? And in that moment, you can decide, well, how many doctors are online? Where do they go? Where do they get their news? Where do I need to actively push in? And where do I fit Joomla into that? What sort of a website will support this broad campaign, right? And then you're wor working very holistically and very strategically with a client who's only told you what they need and they haven't told you, well, um, you know, login box and so on. So this is really, really important to design your own business model and to get away from selling Joomla. Um, so if you're not selling Joomla, I think that you have three options. Uh, you can specialize in two ways. I think uh, there are basically, uh, you specialize because you know about something. A lot of Drupal shops in the UK have specialized on working for nonprofits and NGOs. An awful lot of the Drupal business in the United Kingdom is, is for charity. And um, out of that, there is a sort of a coalition that's happened, and this is what I'm telling you I think might be great for Joomla. Um, payment gateways, UX centered around conversion and a bunch of other best practices, um, plus Drupal module extensions to support charity sites are all pretty popular, and these, they, they, they talk about these things at meetups. I don't think that there's an official, like, actual coalition that's working and maintaining things together, which would be my ideal vision. But still, there's a lot of shared knowledge that goes on. Um, if there's something that you think people need, you can build a product with Joomla. You can build a software as a service using Joomla and sell that. Or if there's something that you have to do every day all the time anyway and you think other agencies might need it, that's another great option to build a product. Or you can diversify. You can be the agency that talks about, um, you know, has that deep conversation with a client and, and offers analysis and, and support and, and everything from the first conversation through to a fully realized package digital transformation, what, whatever, you know, 
whatever you want to do, wherein building Joomla websites is part of an overall package. And that's, that's very, very viable. Um, and it's another way not to rely just on Joomla. And it's a great way to uh, add a lot of intellectual value to what you do. So in this room, think about your skills. Think about your knowledge. Who knows a ton about backend hardcore code development in, in Joomla or other stuff too? Yeah. And who, where are the front enders? Where are my front enders? Right. And in Joomla land, there's an integrator role, right? There's an integrator. In Drupal land, that's called a site builder. You are allowed to, you are allowed to, this is a multi select. That's, all, that's fine. Um, who knows about e commerce? Who's built great e commerce solutions that other people live from? That's cool, right? Um, and who knows about UX and design? Yeah, okay, now. Who doesn't know anything about all that tech stuff, but knows how to market and sell the cool stuff that all these other people do? You're allowed to admit it. Yeah. Okay. Because um, I moved from I moved from the tech side to the dark side. Uh, well, in 2011, I guess officially. So nice. We need uh, marketing and, and salespeople too. Uh, do any of you feel that you have a special affinity or knowledge to a particular kind of a business or a vertical or an industry? Maybe you came out of that industry. Maybe your parents worked in it. Maybe you, I don't know. Does anybody have, feel they have specialist knowledge about something? Put up here, what, what would that be? Road building. Cool. And you? Surgery and... Muscle, strong, strong man, okay, strong man stuff. Like, wait, like, like heavy bubbles guy? That strong man stuff? The, like, world strong man competition, that Icelandic? Oh, neat, okay. Cool. Okay. I, I, I was just um, uh, quite, uh, uh, I had a sort of a medical issue, and I haven't exercised at all for months. Can you help me? Oh, okay, all right. Endurance performance running? Okay, marathons, okay. I don't know. Actually, I do know how to, I do know a business case for that. Any, was there anybody else? Mental health, that's very important. Apart from butter biscuit, what were they called? Yeah, apart from Aberdeen butteries, what do you know about? Schools. Oh, education, right? Fantastic, okay. So, um, there are... Lots of things that you know about, right? And, and lots of ways where you could, you know what marathon runners uh, need and you know what strong men are thinking about and maybe, you know, and, and the road building industry and certainly education is a vertical where, where there's a lot of web stuff, right? So you all have the chance potentially to, to, to solve a problem particularly well in that space and make a business out of it, right? And I bet that, um, I know this isn't all the Joomla-ists. What do you call yourselves? I didn't hear that. Joomlers. Where does the uh, exclamation point go in Joomlers? Because you people have been messing with my autocorrect this week, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, is it out? All right, I, I didn't get up to date on the CI before I built this, but it's glad to I'm glad to know that, thank you. Um, so I, I see an opportunity, um, uh, there are lots of ways to cooperate, right? Because, because some of us know how to sell and some of us know how to build and some of us know about things, right? So, um, so, so there are, I think there are opportunities to find like-minded people and come together. Um, I now want to talk about some examples in the rest of the open source world, and I promise, okay, five minutes, it's gonna have to be five minutes. Good, okay. Uh, and I'll go as quick as I can. Uh, Alex runs a, an agency in Philadelphia. These are examples from other open source uh, 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 communities and, and open source focused companies where I think they've done smart business things. Look for specialization, productization, and diversification in these models. Um, Alex, tries to take 
every single bit of business he can. You got that problem? I can solve it. I got it. We'll figure it out. And he's opened whole new services, right? He's a very, very full service agency. And at the same time, he has to do a lot of QA testing, and Probo.ci is a QA and testing product that they sell through their agency. Lucas Fisher um, sells a lot of hours as NetNode, but he's building a HubSpot competitor using Drupal 8. So it's a software as a service. He's building a HubSpot competitor for inbound marketing where he's going to, uh, where he collects rev revenue on a monthly basis from, uh, from customers and recurring revenue is a great way to make money and it's a great way to do an hour of work and then get multiple hours of pay for it. Roomify is built on Drupal, but it doesn't matter at all, and not all of it is built on Drupal, actually, but it is a hotel holiday management platform. Um, I think large swathes of it are still open source and you can use it, but they've built a bunch of business models around tourism portals using this open source software because one of the other founders grew up in Cyprus where uh, you know everything is tourism, basically. Um, the Drop Solid agency built an infrastructure to create Drupal website, templated Drupal websites very, very quickly and easily. And then um, they built a business model of s um, not selling those websites. Cool Drops, wait, Drop Solid built Cool Drops, right. Cool Drops is going around to SMEs, small to medium enterprises in Belgium and saying, hey, digital marketing is here and it's arrived now and it's affordable. We will sell you digital marketing consulting and we'll sell you five hours of consulting time a month and it's gonna work best if we give you this website to work with, right? And then the upsell is here's how to run a campaign, here's how to do analytics, here's how to understand everything. And they sell these Drupal websites and they upgrade through features and functionality selling business enablement for other businesses. It's really, really brilliant, and they never need to say the word Drupal at all, but it is open source, and it is repeatable, and it's, it's really, and they're helping other people do it, right? Uh, Digital Deployment does the same thing. They've got a highly productized version of Drupal, and they help businesses like pension funds and others um, spin up and run highly effective websites in a very cost-efficient way for them. Um, this is the president of the Typo 3 Association, Olivier Dobacau. Uh, his agency, DKD, takes, I think I have to click here, takes donations to maintain the Typo 3 Apache Solar integration. All of those companies have contributed to that. So DKD collects a very, very large amount of money. In my view, to make a sustainable search solution for the Typo3 CMS. I think that, um, I think it's very smart, and I think it, it, it enhances their CMS in a great way. So this is like, if you wanna start a business like that, you are helping your own community uh, 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 do better business, right? So there's a category of services where, um, uh, so Georg Ringer sells the GDPR extension for Typo3. I, I know that selling extensions is a, is a familiar model in Drupal. I noticed the PWT extensions and the tech Joomla people in the swag bag here. Um, but uh, this is interesting because I think that, especially Georg is doing this uh, from a real sustainability perspective, and I think it's, um, and I think it's really interesting, and I think that there can be more of these kinds of things, uh, some combination of helping the community and you know maintaining code quality for all of us to use. Um, I told you you shouldn't sell co code and you shouldn't sell websites, right? Because nobody cares about that. Um, but if you are located in Romania or Costa Rica, for example, you can um, figure out nice ways to help other businesses uh, work by embedding or near sourcing or helping, you know, supply development capacity. How's the developer hiring situation in Joomla? Is it easy, super easy to get Joomla developers? The room is very quiet, shaking head. Um, in every other open source project, I know it's really, really hard to, to, to hire developers. Um, and there are some new um, outsourcing, near sourcing models that are actually, if you productize it and, and do it in a smart way, it's actually, it's actually pretty interesting. Um, 
Who knows this man? Yeah, so Matthias is the CEO of Typo3 GmbH. Um, and in terms of community sustainability, I think that the Typo3 community did a couple of things that are really, really smart. The community created an association, and this association and the community together created a commercial arm, and this Typo3 Inc. company is the official software vendor for their CMS. So it's allowed to pitch uh, and represent the community in, in, large, uh, in large project bidding, and they've got some interesting advantages there. But they decided that their project needed the enhancement of having an independent service provider, not like Acquia, for example, who's fundamentally been in some level of conflict with the Drupal community for the last decade. Um, Typo3 Inc. is part of the community, but sells SLA-based support. It trains junior developers um, in Typo3 for partner organizations. It has a paid partner program, give them access to special things. Um, it offers support SLAs, I think I said that already, and extended support for the first, so the last newest unsupported version of Typo3. Um, and in its articles of incorporation, it's not allowed to compete with association members who offer a service. So it's got a very, very focused, very community-oriented uh, commercial model. And I think that that is a, a huge stabilizing force in their, in their community. Um, so starting to sum up, um, remember to focus on what the problem is, put yourself in someone's shoes, and help them come to a solution. And if helping them come to a solution means Joomla is not the answer, um, we should learn to live with that because there are enough digital problems out there that for us to solve, I believe. So you want to be at the why end of the conversation. I did see one thing in the swag bag that I really liked today. This company, PixPro, sells uh, Typo3 extensions, right? Is anybody from PixPro here? Yeah, so you sell extensions, right? I said Typo3. I mean Joomla. I swear I mean Joomla. P PixPro sells Joomla extensions, but nowhere on the page is selling the widgets and diving down into the features. They're talking about business enablement, right? And part of how they do that is creating and maintaining great software. I assume it's great because you're here. Thank you for doing that. So. To sum up, how can these examples fit into the beautiful new Joomla logo and landscape, right? I think you can find like-minded people. I'm sure you're not the only marathon runner. I'm sure you're not the only person in the construction industry. Um, I'm sure you're not the only person in education, right? Uh, find like-minded people and build coalitions and address specialist issues, create products, create full solver service offerings, right? Build a package that addresses your vertical with people, with two other agencies, with five other agencies and maintain your distro, your extension, what have you. You can share mar the marketing burden and if you want to be in four different countries and sell into those countries, that's fine. Um, if you want to be close together, that's also fine, but you need to create your Joomla market, right? There is no one the Joomla market. Um, and I want to point out that this coalition model actually really works. There's a company in Germany called Rheinbau, Rheinblau, and um, it is a cooperative. It's a holocratic cooperative of independent professionals who believe in um, being a cooperative and being a flat hierarchy and making individual collective decisions and working it agilely and um, they do use Drupal, among other things. Um, and they do great projects, and they deliver a lot of value for a lot of people. And I think it's a really inspiring example uh, of a way that like-minded people can come together across a broad geography and, um, and, and create business value for themselves and for their clients. <sighs> Running only three minutes over time, I hope. Um, so. I see that the, the, the future is very bright and that there's, a, there's an incredibly interesting potential future without worrying anymore that you need to find the one true market. I really don't think you need to. I think you need to go and solve problems that you care about and the rest, and the rest will flow. I will be here 
uh, as I said all day, I'd love to talk about this. I think we can't talk about it right now. Um, hello to Open Strategy Partners, Jam at Open Strategy Partners. Thank you so much for inviting me today. You're welcome. That was on time. Uh, we only have two questions so far, and we can take those five minutes. So if okay. you want to. Um, the first one is, uh, how you can see it up there if you want. Uh, how do you handle prejudice about certain technology while most people are trying to sell solutions on certain, uh, yeah, you can use it yourself. I I move in several different uh, spaces. Um, I'm really, really pleased to actually be with you. I, I, Joomla's, you know, of the of the open source CMSs. I know you the least well so far. I think by late tonight that'll be completely different. Um, I'm actively involved in Drupal. I'm actively involved in Typo3. I have paid a lot of attention to certain parts of WordPress. Um, I have a client who is completely agnostic about what the front end system is that goes in there, um, and that's all a real blessing. My experience tells me that um, there are a couple of different ways this pans out. There are clients who just have a problem and you get to meet them because you get a referral or because you've helped someone in the past or, or they you know, literally just find you in a listing somewhere sponsoring this or whatever and they come to you and they want to talk about their problems, right? Um, there are other clients that walk in the door and they say, you know, uh, we want Typo3, we want Drupal and if somebody comes to you asking for te technology that you don't know about, I guess you could decide to change the future of your agency and adopt it, but I'm not sure that makes sense. Um, if a client doesn't, oh, you know what? An old colleague of mine said, I don't want to ever have a boss who doesn't want me working for him, right? If somebody just doesn't want Joomla, I don't think we have to worry about it. There's um, 70% of the internet, 60% of the internet nowadays that is not powered by any recognizable CMS. I think that even if we only get half of that, <laughs> right, that means that we still double how many websites are running CMSs, and um, there's just so much room to grow and grow the pie and be together, right? I just... I just don't think we should worry so much, right? Um, if it comes to a point where the, 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 the budgets are tight and the pipelines are disappearing, we might have to reconsider everything that we're doing, right, in our industry. But I truly believe that if you're offering consultative business value and empathy rather than offering Joomla, I'm not sure how much that matters in the end. It had noch immer Jod, Junge. Right, exactly. <laughs> it could be, it could. <laughs> okay, I should have just said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, long story short. And the second one is about uh, how do your clients cooperate with upstream? So I think it's, it's getting in the direction if you're offering specialized products, how does that work if everyone wants something else? Um, I have just been through really intense negotiations about forking or not forking an open source tool that involved someone becoming a customer or not becoming a customer <laughs> of a particular organization. And it's really, really interesting. Um, if the Joomla project is technically capable, in fact, I know that you can build distros with Joomla and you can build uh, packages, extensions, right? Um, the, the kinds of businesses that I was thinking of mostly would be um, you know absolutely the best way to uh, run and manage a government department or um, and a, a, a department of a university and you put together a set of best practices and uh, configurations and extensions and so on that plug into Joomla, that extend Joomla, that configure it to work the best and then you share those among yourselves, right? Choose to open source it to the community or not 
you can choose not to, but um, putting things together so that you have like a head start package and you combine that with a knowledge base and shared best practices within your coalition, right? You have a really strong sales position that doesn't get to uh, a technical conflict. Um, whoever asked that, can you give me an example of like a conflict that would necessitate the fork? In education, you have small schools, and then? And you, you might have a conflict uh, with uh, large schools, universities, for example, they have different use case, but they have commonalities, um, so there is an intersection between the needs of the two, but perhaps uh, one dominates the other, so one doesn't feel like this is our thing, yeah. and we don't have enough say in the matter, so we, we'll have to fork and do our own thing, and we won't contribute or split the community. Right. Um, I actually know the exact answer to that in, in Drupalland. Uh, uh, someone built a distro to deal with elementary schools and small organizations, and it was pretty much built around, you know, sort of one building school, two to 800 kids, and, you know, classes and teachers and so on. Um, and it worked really, really well. And then there is a coalition of higher education technology practitioners who build kind of meta-level features. And then someone built a distro that handled, uh, you know, each professor has a website, each department has a website, students can have websites. And, and um, the, 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 the best solution there is, is, as you say, to find the commonalities um, and have functionality that's modular enough to, um, to plug and play. The, um, the, the, pro the conflict that I was helping negotiate recently um, between a fork and not a fork of a tool ended up with the decision basically to create an expert mode, uh, you know, like an OEM version that'll be co-supported by two different organizations, but under the hood it's gonna be the same thing. So it was like, there's lots of ways that that stuff can go. Thank you. So the next 